Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So, brand new month and a brand new pass. This is the uh, fifth pass I'm working on. There will be nine in total. And once again, I will be working uh, 60 rows high. Yeah, I find that what that is what fits comfortably in my frame. And if I have leftover, I add them to the top passes. So the first two passes were 70 uh, rows, and then the rest are 60. So got everything wrestled back into <laughs> into my frame and back into my stand after having made my monthly update video. So here we go. So yeah, I know last time I didn't film the start of my pass and somebody was disappointed, so I'm doing it this time. <laughs> and yeah, I have to fill up my working tray again because the colors have changed from what I was using last month because of course we were at the end of the pass, so colors were totally different. It was all window and then flowers. And now we're back to uh, the last bit of the water. Yeah. And uh, then there'll be the rest of this flower bud here. Yeah. Don't think there'll be many big blocks of color here. It's, uh, it's looking pretty detailed. Kind of went through the pattern a bit and looked at it so yeah it'll be easy to know how many i did this month because i'm starting at exactly 143,000 stitches i'm finishing that last pass and as i've said before the 50 percent mark is 153,450 so we may or may not get to that this month that's just over 10,000 which i usually manage but I do have to deal with my apple harvest as well. So yeah, that won't take as much time as doing the renovations did, but that will take some of my time, yeah. yeah. From what I can tell, I have a normal crop of apples this year. Nothing too overboard, but we will see. usually end up with more than I think. <laughs> so. yeah, last year, well, my husband had time off work, so he helped me by doing all the coring and cutting, which saved me like two days of work. But yeah, this year he had to use his holidays on the renovations, so it's going to be up to me, but that's okay. Well, that kind of seemed more fair because uh, I felt bad that he did most of the work because Either it was stuff I didn't know how to do, or I just wasn't that good at, because, yeah, I tried painting and I could not seem to get it even without any lines in it. I couldn't seem to blend it properly, no matter how much I tried. So I did help with, like, sort of the first coat of primer, and I painted some baseboards and stuff like that. But yeah, he had to do the rest of it, because I just could not get it to look good. Oh, I've always said, my freehand stuff is just no good i've never been good at painting either walls or trying to paint a picture either of them is always a <laughs> a failure so yeah so i was the one who was down on the floor with a tiny little paintbrush filling in all the the nail holes and stuff on the uh, on the trim it was kind of funny because it was in a i had the paint in an old water glass and it was white, so I took a picture saying, oh, look, it's forbidden milk. <laughs> and one of my friends said, you know, even with the paintbrush right there, I would still want to drink it, you know. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah, like sort of, I went and painted over all the silicone ceiling in the sealant in the um, baseboards and that, so. Yeah, it was funny. Baseboards we got were all smooth. The standard ones that I've always seen since I was a kid, they were either really expensive or nobody carried them anymore. So, yeah, it's been odd to me because I've lived in so many different houses. When I was a kid, we moved a lot. And they always had the same baseboards, and then now they're, like, impossible to find. <laughs> Although, I guess one thing I like is if they're 
really smooth, then that's easier to keep clean. Yeah. That's one problem with things that have sort of grooves and wood grain is they really trap the dust and it is much harder to clean them and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because one of my friends posted this cool looking backsplash for the kitchen and uh, it was like for like a Halloween-y kind of thing and it was um, a bunch of skulls and stuff and I said that looks really cool but that would be a nightmare to clean. Like I said, look at all the crevices and and so he's like, oh, I didn't think of that. I said, yeah, like I'm at the age now that everything, my decision isn't so much, does it look pretty, but how hard is it to clean? Because yeah. Ooh. When we replaced our fridge, I made sure we got one with a smooth finish because our old one had this like decorative sort of crackle pattern. But then the problem was, yeah, it, it is such a pain to wipe clean because all of the dirt would try to you know hide in those cracks and oh I did not like it so yeah I said we're getting a smooth one next time and like we um when we replaced our windows we got this almost like a vinyl plastic kind of um trim that goes around them which is so nice because yeah just a dry cloth wipe it off and it's done so yeah and actually it doesn't look like plastic like it still does look kind of like painted wood so yeah i really like it because but because it's not painted you don't have to worry about wiping the paint off of it right because yeah that's always a i said that's always a pain is either i find i can't remove the dirt or if i scrub hard enough to remove the dirt then it removes a layer of paint too which you don't want right so yeah Very happy to have the Renaults done. Everything looks nice and clean and fresh now. We still have our kitchen to do one of these days, but kitchen renovations are not cheap, that's for sure, yeah. So <laughs> one day. So, yeah, I see not as many big blocks, but here, as you can see, there's also not as many colors and they kind of form like a stair step stripe sort of pattern here. So that makes it easier to, to stitch. I don't have to stop and start quite as much, which is always nice, helps things go a little quicker. So yeah, we're at 46.6%. So. We'll see if I manage to make it to 50% or not. Because yeah, each 1% is around uh, 3,000 stitches in a little bit. So. Birds are being extremely noisy outside today. I guess they're gonna start heading south soon. Yeah, it's, uh, I would say it's autumn to us now. I know some people are still dealing with summer heat, depending on where you live, but I am happy that we are not. <laughs> just like I was on the far side of this, making sure that all my pin stitches are far enough in that none of the trimmed ends are going to go past the edge of the design. Goodness, there we go. <laughs> that was being a little tricky there. Yeah, so like I said earlier, I haven't been stitching as um, diagonal lately, but, uh, 
the colors are kind of just going that way naturally right here. So it sort of ends up that way. So yeah, I turned off my diagonal lines on my pattern keeper because I wasn't really following them anymore. My method morphed over time. So I think it took me about five months to do a pass. Or actually four, yeah. Yeah, about four and a bit. And I have five passes to go, so yeah. That's less than two years. We will see. Although my current Excel sheet is giving me an estimate of, yes, that's right, in 2026, so. We will see what we get. And of course, like I said, things got a little thrown off. So I had to miss a bunch of <laughs> stitching time with the renovations. So we will see. be laggy today we'll see what happens okay so yeah so not huge blocks of color but these uh these are kind of there's not as many colors here so that does kind of keep things moving along i was going to start with a shorter piece but actually now that i look at it i'm going to carry the piece downward and then probably back up so i might as well at this point just use a Full length piece. Yeah, some beautiful blue sky today, thankfully. No more smoke, at least for now. Yeah, we had some rain, which definitely helped. Hopefully helped with the fires too, if they had some. <laughs> yeah, they're further away. But yeah, as I live on the prairies and it's flat, <laughs> smoke really travels. And I could feel it. Yeah. Even if a knot forms on the other side, I usually catch it because I can hear or feel it. And also, the thread will suddenly be shorter than I expect it to be. So, yeah. There are times when I don't catch it, but that's pretty rare, I find. Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me. <laughs> Yes, we were disappointed to hear the Star Wars, the newest Star Wars show they canceled it after one season. Acolyte? Yeah, we were enjoying it. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but yeah, we were enjoying it. And so, a little disappointed that it's not coming back. But again, they, they don't give stuff any time to really catch on. It, uh, like the whole thing just dropped like what a month ago yeah like the last 
episode was like maybe a month ago. Yeah, they don't give stuff any time now. And I find almost like these days with streaming, there are so many shows to watch that I think you have to be patient. Give something a little time to find a following, but they're more impatient than ever. Like, yeah, I shared a meme the other day saying that, um, you know, shows, you know, 20 years ago or something said, you know, oh, it's kind of slow, but once you get through the first, you know, 40 episodes and it gets good. And this is then shows now it's like, if this isn't a smash hit, you know, 20 minutes after it drops, we're going to shoot the cast. Like, yeah, just about. Oh. Like, I've often used the example of MASH. TV show did not have good ratings the first couple of seasons and was constantly in danger of being cancelled and um, they even wrote an episode called ceasefire which showed everybody you know congratulating or you know celebrating that there was a ceasefire they wouldn't get to go home and then at the very end it turns out it was a false alarm the whole time Trapper is saying you know oh don't believe it you know I'll believe it when I'm actually home and stuff and then it turns out he was right but they wrote it so that that could have been the way the show ended if it got cancelled. And they kind of, they filmed both endings kind of thing. And then they got, no, you're renewed. So then it turned out to be uh, uh, a false alarm. And then, yeah, like I said, it went on to be one of the most successful shows in TV history. It beat out the Super Bowl that year. Like, yeah, so... They don't give anything a chance anymore. And plus, like I said, they make so few episodes now, too, that there's also, I find, that's less of a chance for people to, uh, to catch it, right? If there's only eight episodes, yeah. You might not have even heard of the show before they're done airing, and, yeah, they didn't count it as, so... So yeah, I was happy to hear they, they did renew the show Ted, which is um, the um, magical talking teddy bear. There was a couple of uh, couple of movies, and then they made a TV show, and it was, yeah. Again, that one wasn't as many episodes, but in that one I get it, because it's very CGI heavy. Because, of course, right, they have to CGI to bear, so that one I got, but... Um, yeah, it was pretty darn funny. Plus, it's a prequel, so it's set like in the 80s. And, uh, you know, that was when I grew up. So there was a lot of uh, cultural references that we quite enjoyed. Like um, for Halloween, uh, Ted dresses up as an Ewok. <laughs> but everyone thinks he's something else. <laughs> I can't remember what, but yeah. But I think I read that they said they have something like a budget of like eight million an episode, which is just like mind blowing. <laughs> oh. But yeah, like I said, I kind of miss. They don't do bottle shows anymore, which were often my favorite. Because, like I often say, instead of special effects, they were saving the money, budgeting for future episodes or whatever. And, uh, so they were character-driven episodes, which were, yeah, some of the best. Okay, so. Yeah, and then we were also watching the new Futurama episodes because um, the original series run ended, I think, 2014, something like that. And then yeah, it got revived. So, because I mean, hey, it's all animated. So as long as you can get the voice actors back, you don't have a problem, right? With the fact that the uh, 
the cast has aged. So yeah, it's been quite fun. But uh, yeah, it's on Disney Plus and uh, they mislabeled a lot of episodes because we had the first eight seasons, the original run on DVD. And then we went to what they labeled as season nine, but half of the episodes were ones we'd seen before. So yeah. And we went and looked online and it's like, okay, so it wasn't just us who was confused. There were a lot of people saying, yeah, they, uh, they mislabeled a bunch of them. So, uh, Oh yeah, I was telling my husband that next time I watch Supernatural, he has to watch it with me. And that it's nice because the brothers are, are our age, so all the cultural references are stuff we get, yeah. There's one when they meet. I think he was a prophet, and his daughter, he says, you know, I'm Donatello. And uh, Dean says, like the Ninja Turtle? <laughs> Which is funny because before he said it, <clears throat> pardon me, that was immediately where my mind went. <laughs> you know, then, no, there was a sculptor before there was the Ninja Turtle. Like, the Ninja Turtles were all named after famous artists, right? Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, right? Yeah. Uh... Tangled it up. There. It wasn't even a knot, it was just the end of the thread. Oops. Oh, that was in the wrong mode. There we go. Ends of the thread kind of twisted. So I made the whole thing just a little bit thicker, which was enough to stop me from pulling it through. So that's why I planned this. Now I'll carry this thread all the way up and I'll cross as I go. These really sort of skinny runs of color, I generally prefer to cross as I go. I find they look a little neater when I do that. If I do all the bottom legs when it's going in a diagonal direction like that, they can look a little funny, at least to me anyway. So yeah, when they're skinny, like I say, I often sneak them back and forth. And then I don't have to add extra threads of the same color as often either. I don't mind doing that, but I prefer to reduce the number of threads when I can. It makes things a little easier to, to keep in control and from getting tangled up. Oh yeah, talked about my cross-stitching friend. She said she did the math to figure out how many stitches she has to do per day to get it done by the end of October, which is 500 something. And uh, cause yeah, she said that way, I wanna be able to take it and get it framed while they're having all the Christmas sales. Which I was like, ah, smart, yes. And she says that way, if I can take it sort of end of October, beginning of November, I'll get to the cashing on the sales, but hopefully get it back before the end of the year. Yeah, so she can hang it up then, so yeah. Yeah, she stitches on much smaller count than me. <laughs> well, I say she had LASIK, so 
Her eyesight's better than mine now. Yeah. I've stitched, the smallest I've stitched on is 18, and that's small enough for me, I find. Yeah. Well, she is also doing hers in 10 stitch, so that does help. Not in full cross, because it's on 28 count, so. Yeah. Yeah, I have people say, like, do you lose detail with 10 stitch, or whatever. It's like, no, it's the the same number of pixels, so it's just you have to make sure that you use a, a number of threads that has enough coverage too. So, okay, so I'm just gonna look at what I've got here. Okay, yeah, so this time I'm gonna divide this off, take one thread down this way and keep going downward, and then do a different thread probably going up this way especially since this thread here that I'm stitching with right now, it's partly used up, so probably wouldn't be enough to stitch sort of this whole thing here. Yeah, I mean, I do kind of like the idea that, you know, tent stitch is faster since you don't have to cross the stitches, but yeah, I'm thinking I would have to kind of change how I stitched and I'm not sure I want to do that now. I'm kind of set in my ways. I don't know. I just, I like completing the stitch, so. Yeah, I think 10 stitch tends to look the best on the higher counts of fabric, too. Yeah, with 14 count, like someone was saying, they'd have to use four strands because you generally lose, use double the number of strands that you would for a full cross and I'm like yeah four strands I think that would be more than I would want to wrestle with so or some people said they use three but then that makes loop starts and stuff a lot more difficult so it is possible I know um I've seen a couple videos I can't remember who by and I apologize but on YouTube about being able to do a loop start with an uneven number of strands. But yeah, with an even number is sort of the simplest, so. There we go. Okay, so it's still trying to tangle on me. Yes, I'm wondering what kind of a winter we're going to have this year. It's pretty mild last year, except for one cold snap. We always have at least one week when it gets bone chillingly cold, like minus 50. <laughs> That's, yeah, five zero. Yeah. But yeah, that was the thing, like somebody said, it really gets that cold. I said, well, it does, but it's not like it's that cold year, you know, the whole winter like that's a cold snap usually we're like minus 15 minus 20 celsius which if you're used to it isn't really that bad especially because we don't have high humidity it is harder when it's when it's humid you do feel it more okay yeah so i am going to Add another thread and carry back up this way and then back down, loop around. Oh, I've done exactly a hundred stitches. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah. We're about halfway through my session with you all. So yeah, like I said, there's only been like four different colors here, so that does speed things up.
Breathe. Two all the way up. Try not to stitch on my grid line, but sometimes it's just a pain not to, so I just leave it. <coughs> oh. Did I miss a stitch? Yeah, I think I did. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I did one one instead of two. The nice thing about this monofilament thread is it does slide out pretty easily afterwards. I've never had any problems, even when it has been stitched over. Yeah. Sort of, as long as you're patient and don't ream on it too hard, it doesn't distort anything. So, yeah, I know some people say they use fishing line, which I tried, but. Even the skinniest I found was a little thicker than I liked, and I was worried that it would cause distortion, especially like if you stitched over it, the thickness of it would then, when you pulled the thread out, would leave the stitches loose. And I don't want that, so. <clears throat> don't want the dreaded line showing up in my work, so. Gonna take a peek at what I've got here. Yeah, I have some smaller leftover pieces. So rather than going upwards with this, I'm just gonna do this and then park it to take it downwards. And I'll use a small, short little piece to do the three stitches that are there by themselves. Okay, so that's there. Yeah, so did someone ask how I don't poke myself with the needle since I leave them threaded? Well, I said I pick them up carefully, but also I kind of pick up by the thread and not by grabbing the needle and sticking my fingers sort of in amongst a bunch of the needles, yeah more likely to get stuck that way. <laughs> okay. But also these, these are not terribly sharp, so yeah, I generally don't stick myself with them. I had a couple of times that happened. Mostly I was doing a pin stitch and there was sort of resistance and I pushed harder and then, yeah, when it finally went through, it kind of got me, but other than that, that's pretty rare.
Okay, singles all the way down. So I say that I don't really stitch diagonal as much anymore, but sort of when the colors happen to go that way and I'm not fighting the way they want to go, then I, I do kind of revert to diagonal. It's just, yeah, like I said, the, the peacock was standing with his tail feathers going the opposite direction and I found fighting it was just starting to get <laughs> frustrating so I amended my stitching. Sometimes it ends up it's a pretty perfect diagonal. Okay, so click that one there. Oh my goodness, I tell you, I'm not doing well. So yeah, the center of the pattern um, vertically is right here. There's a little arrow on the side you can see there. So that's the center right there. So yeah, that's how why I'm going to reach 50% uh, partway through this. Because of course, I'm going to extend past that. So before I reach the center horizontally, I'll have hit 50%. Yeah. Okay, so I decided I was going to do a separate small piece for those there. Yeah, so Kittle's all recovered from his wisdom tooth surgery he had at the end of July, beginning of August. So he's still not allowed to eat chips for another month, though, <laughs> or popcorn. Yeah. But yeah, he said everything is all nicely healed. So yeah, they didn't give me that. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, Allow. I was, yeah, they never told me I wasn't allowed when I had my wisdom teeth out, but like I say, mine was over 20 years ago, so I guess things have changed since. <laughs> okay, so there is another thread parked here. Yeah. Well, it's actually a little longer than I thought it would be. Okay. Yeah, but oh well. Sometimes I just end up with more threads than I need. That's just the way it works out, but I just save the leftover bits for later. Okay. 
with these huge pieces, there's always going to be somewhere else to use up the leftovers. That one there, and that's this one off. Yeah, so that means I might finish this pass by the end of the year. We will see, but I'm not making any goals because like I've said before, I find that stressful. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna do these. Oh goodness. And trying to make a reappearance. This color seems to be wanting to curl up on me a lot today. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm going to start another thread of this color because there is a lot of it here and it kind of branches off and such, so I'll do those as well. so much that it'll get used, no problem. Going diagonal for now, but then as I work around, when I get closer to the flower, it's going to start changing. But I won't be getting to that today, I don't think.
So for the moment, I'm going to use one thread for this and kind of jump it around as necessary. Jump to this edge here. Yeah, again, because it's skinny runs of color, it just it's pretty easy to snake it back and forth. Some water here, and then I think, yeah, we're gonna get some flowers showing up at the bottom of this pass as well. Yeah, this is sort of the last of the water. It'll be a little bit beside the big flower bud there, too. And that will be it. new color showing up here. Ah, some green. Yeah, I think that this is a leaf that is around, yeah, yeah, this is a leaf that is around the uh, bud showing up here. Yeah, the leaves that were for the pink flowers were all like blues and grays, <laughs> and then these ones are actually green. this up and then come back down so I might as well use a new piece instead of a, one of my leftover bits. I usually don't cross as I go, but when it's really skinny little 
strips like this than I do. Once it gets wider than one stitch, then I tend to work more in rows than crossing as I go. spot. <laughs> there we go. Don't want to leave a gap. There shouldn't be one. Well, this is a full coverage piece, so there shouldn't be gaps at all. <laughs> yeah, I stitched some non-full coverage pieces, but once I started this, yeah, I've stitched a couple because I made some little wedding banners for uh, for family members that were not full coverage. They were little Legend of Zelda ones. But other than that, yeah, ever since I fell down the full coverage rabbit hole, that's all I've been stitching. <laughs> but yeah, I stitched one for, well, both my sisters-in-law love, that got married, love, uh, Legend of Zelda, so yeah. One of them got one that said linked together and then was, yeah, Princess Zelda and Link in the wedding date. And then the other one said, it's dangerous to go alone, take this, and then Zelda and Link, and then their names and the date, so yeah. Yeah, I had a friend saying, man, I want you to make one of these for me even though I'm single. <laughs> yeah, they're so cute. And they were made to look like the original 8-bit graphics, so, yeah. Oh, this string is going to run out soon. It's okay. I'll start another. It's a lot of this. I will probably end up with multiple threads of this one. Yeah, we are going to do over 200 today. But yeah, like I said, not very many colors, so it goes pretty quickly. Okay, so we're going to. Sort of divide that up for now. And we'll see. I'll either just come and sneak back up and do it or I might add another thread. I'll sort of decide when I get there. Because I often decide depending sort of by how long the thread that I have attached is will affect where I decide to travel it.
wrong. Yeah, sometimes I have a whole path planned for a piece of thread and then it knots up so badly that I end up having to cut it and restart, so that thwarts me sometimes too. Oh yes, I just forgot. There's another thread part down here. So I probably should have carried this one upwards, but that is okay. Instead, I will probably carry both of them upwards. So this one will go upwards from here and this one will go upwards and then back downwards. Yeah, I usually check what I have attached because that affects what I decide to do with other threads, but I forgot this time, but that is okay. Like I said, there's so much of this color in this area. Both threads and more will get used up anyway, so not a big deal. Yeah, I can't hold that many in my head at once, so sometimes I forget. <laughs> and then I just adjust accordingly, so yeah. This one that is here, oops. I'll kind of keep it for the the single runs here. So we're past two hundred. That has been a productive morning. That's for sure. while so I get to that one so I'm gonna just unthread it for now Yeah, one thing I like about starting a new pass is you can really see how much you have done because if you know everything below that line, <laughs> it's new stitching. Okay, so yeah, the single one I'm going to carry that way and it's probably going to be a 
out by the time I reach there pretty close. We will see. Oh, look at that, I've stitched 222. <laughs> and let's take a look. Oh, wait, I can't do that yet. Right. Okay, let's take a look at what I've got here. All right, so. Could do that, I suppose. Let's see. Yeah, this one is probably going to run out anyway pretty soon. And so what I'll probably do is then head back to the top and start working my way downwards again. I generally don't sort of carry all the way down that 60 rows and then and then back up I sort of move back and forth a bit <laughs> before I get there so so I believe I'm going to stop at row 320 because I think we stopped at row 260 yes that is correct so yeah, another 60 rows is 320. Oh yeah. This is going to run out right where I marked it. <laughs> All right, so right there, and then since, oh, I missed marking that one done. And then since this one down here is still threaded, I think I will just carry it up until it runs out. And then I'm going to, like I said, go back up sort of to the top and start working my way down along that edge again. Okay, I often say I don't try to work over two wide of an area at once anymore or I start to have so many live needles that it gets more confusing. Oh, see, I stitched that down there when I didn't mean to. I think it's with this thread. Hang on a sec, let me check. I think I caught it because it was kind of loose. Oh, I did catch it with a previous thread, so... Like I say, it doesn't really matter because it will slide out afterwards, but if the grid lines are kind of wonky, then I can mess up my counting that way. So one, two, three, yeah. This thread. Four. Try not to stitch over it. So sometimes what I will do is I will Sort of, this is where the line is supposed to be, so I'll kind of stitch over it on purpose to kind of hold it up there that way. Yeah, made it more square and I'm less likely to, to mix myself up. Because, yeah, I had one time, I kept thinking, why am I one row short before realizing 
I had pulled my grid line out of place, and that was why it wasn't matching. It was at row 9 and not row 10. That's pretty much perfect. It ran out there, so. So then, like I said, I will, yeah, kind of come back up here. Just gonna move these threads sort of out of my way for now. So I'm not working with them yet. Okay, so I'm going to check the length of the thread that's parked here. Yep, do some detangling here. These threads have been hanging for a while, so you can sometimes get a little more tangled, but generally, if you're patient enough with it, you can get them separated. Okay. Yeah, still gonna do. Like I've said before, there are so many stitches of this color in this area that multiple threads will all get used anyway, so it's not a problem. I think I will be taking a break soon. Because it's coming on to lunchtime soon. <laughs> done a lot of stitches this session. Yeah, because like I said, there was not very many colors here, so it zipped on by. So it'll be time to take a break anyway, so I don't get <laughs> repetitive stress pain. Yeah, I always have to watch that. Don't overdo it. 
see, like I said, I did that once. I managed to do 2,000 stitches in two days, so like 1,000 stitches a day. And then I couldn't stitch for like four days because, yeah, my arms were on fire. So I have learned I need to pace myself more. do this run here and then that's going to be where I take a break for today. So, yeah. That was quite an impressive stitch count. I did start from zero, so <laughs> like I said, I like when I start a new one because like all of this I knew, I know I've done today. Which I'm quite happy with. Do a bit more later, but take a break and give my arms a rest first. Okay, so 276, I'm quite happy with that number. So thank you so much for joining me today and I hope to see you here next time. Thanks everyone.